Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this week has been a, a bit of an interesting one for us. Mm -hmm. um, we've been kind of involved in a, in a little bit of a, a social media frenzy uh, yeah. regarding shaft performance and the value of shafts and something that we always, you know, we always kind of have to sometimes back ourselves up, you know, in terms of what we do in here and um, what we believe is the value of, of the aftermarket shaft, if yep. you want to call it that. Um, so a name that a lot of you guys will be familiar with, Mark Crossfield um, on his channel, posted a video earlier in the week and, and Mark's always been a little bit skeptical of, yes. you know, the, the kind of value of, of changing shafts and the aftermarket shafts and all that sort of mm -hmm. thing. It's fair to say fair that. Fair to say, yeah, yeah, definitely. So he done a video and put it out with one of his guys and, um, you know, they, they delivered some numbers on GC yep, Quad that, that showed very minimal change in actual, you know, launch and spin and all that sort they of thing. They had a really stiff shaft versus like a ladies shaft yeah, kind they, of thing. they had a Project X Hazardous <coughs> Yellow versus a, a Callaway stock uh, ladies lady shaft, shaft, you know, shorter length. And, right. you know, they, they kind of showed that the results weren't, you know, one goes way high, no. one goes way low. And it the ball flight numbers were quite, quite similar. Yeah, actually. They, they were quite, they were quite similar. So yep. we kind of wanted to touch on that one and, you know, as, as we said, we fully believe uh, in the value of, of the shaft to the player and the ability to personalize. So we kind of dug a little bit deeper into that. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the first thing that was interesting just about that whole process that yeah. they went through, mm -hmm. we did a couple tests yeah. that actually kind of support the type of data that he got. Yeah. In fact, to the point where when I watched it and you watched it, it wasn't a surprise. No. And I don't think I took it as like, oh, Mark is totally discounting shafts and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. He wasn't really, because that's the type of test that we've done. We've done two extremes of shafts, yep. maybe not ladies, mm -hmm. in, but we've gone pretty extreme. Yep. And we've seen that the actual club head was the main determinant of, of the ball flight numbers. And when of we say that- conditions. Launch conditions mm -hmm. is the way, so, yeah. so launch angle spin rate right. is what you're talking yep. about. Exactly. And uh, to be fair, in his video, he didn't really talk a whole lot mm -hmm. about, you know, the dynamics of the swing and stuff. He was just saying, you know, you're not gonna go and change your shaft and completely change your launch conditions, which is fair. Yeah. I think it's fair. I think that's it's <laughs> fully fair. And we, you know, when we're seeing the, the initial launch characteristics of certain players, I don't go, okay, it needs to be that shaft because right. that will kill the spin or, yes. you know, this, that, and that. I'm going towards heads that have the right characteristics mm -hmm. that will change that based on CG location, mm -hmm. based on, you know, head dimension, all that sort of stuff. You know, I'm not really one that says, you know, the shaft deflects less, therefore it will spin less. Yeah. You know, that that's one of the thing. first things I think that I learned from you was just the first time you helped me with my driver. Mm -hmm. We talked about different shafts, but right. I don't actually remember you saying, this shaft will spin less or launch yeah. low. You didn't actually say that. No. You just said your, your shaft being a softer profile yep. might get a little behind you with deflection and such. We were talking swing characteristics, really. Definitely. And I think that's the big <clears throat> thing when we start to get into, um, you know, the role of the shaft here is it's so important to, to mention that, that shaft is a, is a tuning device. Mm. So it's, it's a, something that we use to help the player time the delivery better. So it helps them be more consistent. And that's from uh, an impact location standpoint. Okay. Yep. Right. So when, you know, we're going to do a test uh, just, in a, just shortly. And really, I think that is probably what we will be able to show the most mm -hmm. is that a shaft that is deflecting inconsistently. Right will deliver a different strike location, the head versus one that is, you know, much more predictable in its load. Different patterns. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and we all know with the bulge and roll and the club face, you know, that, you know, there's, we've got Matt's driver right here. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, a, a ping G400, nine degree, might be nine degree in the middle there, but it's 10 and a half up there. Right. And it's seven and a half down there. Yeah. So there's about a three degree radius on that on that okay. head yep. um, and where launch is, is different. So when we're talking about how shafts, you know, create launch and spin, you know, gear effect, you know, mm. so you, you, the shaft is deflected a little bit more and can change strike location. I believe that a shaft can change strike location. Yep. I've done it. We've um, seen it. I, we've I've seen even it. experienced it with you 100%. As well. yeah. That was one of the things Mark didn't quite believe that um, he said he didn't believe that sh uh, shaft deflection would change strike, strike point. I, I disagree with that. Right. Um, Hopefully we can yeah, talk we'll, about we'll, that. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so, you know, when, when we're talking about strike location up, down, you know, and, and heel and toe, 
that that delivers the, the head in a different way. Right. Okay. That's that's the most important distinction is you're not saying the shaft itself is changing the launch conditions. Correct. If it affects the strike location, mm -hmm. then of course it will affect the launch conditions. Because yeah. as you've shown me as well, like the, the location on the strike mm -hmm. is so huge to how the ball launches. Yeah. Like low on the face versus high on the face with the driver, mm -hmm. the ball flight numbers are insanely different. Yeah. So I, I, I see where that is confusing to people, I yeah. think. And maybe that's just the perception of taking it too literally, saying right. the shaft is not actually changing your launch angle. But mm. maybe it'll change how you strike the club. One of the things that we get into with our players is how perceptive they are to the feel of a golf club. Right, right. So when we're working with our players and we go, you know, can you feel this? Can you feel that? Some of them may be very mute in terms of what they feel and they right. might go, yeah, I don't feel any difference. Interesting. And I know I've given them, you know, a golf club that, for example, will change swing weight by four points. It, you know, it may be significantly different in weight, and they go, yeah, I don't, I don't feel, really? you know, I don't feel the, the, any, any real change. Other people feel everything mm. um, in terms of it. So the people who feel more, are more you know, perceptive to change are going to be influenced by the subtleties of what we're doing. Yes. much more than the others because they're, they're going to feel where the club is traveling differently. And that's one of the things that Mark brought up in the video yep. was, um, is there kind of, I think he referred to it kind of as a placebo effect. Sure. But if you're aware of what the shaft should do and you're aware of how it feels, mm -hmm. is that actually mentally affecting how you swing kind of thing? Placebo is real. I mean, yeah. placebo is a real, <clears throat> you know, is a real thing. And, you know, if you are expecting something to happen, you know, you're kind of putting it in your mind that, that that's going to happen. So, yeah. you know, all of a sudden, if you feel that that shaft is stiffer, you know, and you're going to struggle to rotate the face, sure, you're going to, you're, you're either going to block it or you're going to over rotate, yeah. you know, and try to close it. So yeah. you're going to start to change your delivery based on, on those feels. Um, that's when, you know, we call it a timing device because when we match you up to the right shaft and the one that loads and unloads the best mm -hmm. is the one that you know you have to make the 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 least amount of you know adjustment with your own swing gotcha. to square that face because you're Feels looking like for consistency naturally. yeah yeah exactly yeah. so it's just it's all timing uh, and and that type of thing so what we're going to do is a little bit of a test with Matt and we know his speed is is extreme a little bit higher than Mark's i think Mark's probably around the 106 107 mark so you know, we've got um, you know Matt who swings closer to 118 to 120 ish. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a bit higher if we if we're you know if we're really pushing you, but about that window. Right. So we're going to grab some softer shafts, some stiffer ones, and and see see what we see with your shaft. So we're looking to see patterns in strike location mostly. We'll talk about the feel of it. Yep. Talk about how maybe influencing my my uh, delivery. Mm -hmm. I guess would be we're, the way to say we'll it. We'll talk into little things you know in the dynamics of how the shaft works and in terms of the droop. Uh, in right. terms of you know the the deflection, um, we've been we've been chatting this week with some really interesting guys in the industry, mm -hmm. some of the leaders in in the R and D world. Um, Fujikura developed a machine called uh, called Enzo, mm -hmm. right? So the Enzo machine is is probably the mar or the the industry leader in in sort of shaft deflection measurement technology. Okay. Okay. Yep. So you can go on Fujikura's website, you can actually watch a lot of videos on them testing shafts uh, with Enzo. And what basically we have in, in GC Quad and TrackMan and all these sorts of things, we have every we have launch monitors that, that tells what happens at impact and after. Right. Fujikura Enzo is is a basically launch monitor for everything else pre impact. Oh really? So okay. when the club moves, you know, it will tell it'll tell us how the club deflects in the backswing, right. it will tell us how it deflects and rotates in the downswing, how much droop, how much head rotation, yep. you know, how much does the handle lead versus trail, how much does the shaft accelerate, um, you know, throughout that the swing. Way. Yeah. So everything it will <clears throat> everything that is dynamic in movement with the shaft, yep. Enzo will will basically pick that up through coordinates established on the golf club. So you know, is it sensor based like yes. on the actual club? So it's in the same way that, that motion capture technology. Okay. So if, if you've probably seen the TaylorMade Mat Labs and they'll yeah, put they the, the sensors, dots all right? over you. So what you do is actually put these dots all over the club mm -hmm. and then you, you, you use, you tri triangulate those, those coordinates yep. to basically create, you know, the movement patterns of the club in motion. So a 3D model of how yeah, it's moving. Yeah, exactly. So that, that <clears> helps measure 
patterns and, and that type of thing. Um, you know, so they're, they, the ultimate goal with this technology will be to um, take the data, take player types, swing types, mm -hmm. that type of thing, and be able to you know, go, okay, you swing it like this, right. this will help you, you know, because oh, okay. we've tested it. You know, that, that process is, is kind of what they're, they're doing. That's what right they're now. working towards they're, for the future. And th that is a difficult thing to do. It must be, yeah. I very, can very difficult. That's endless testing. <clears throat> um, but they're, they're really starting to make some headway That's cool stuff. Um, with that. Hopefully so. something we can maybe get on the channel at some point, get yeah. that kind of data, maybe some capture of that at, at some point in the future. Well, we had a nice we had a nice invite from the guys at Ping to go out to their uh, their headquarters oh, and, uh, nice. and go and test with them on Enzo and, cool. uh, and and kind of give you guys a little bit more information. So right. yeah, we really, we'd appreciate that. That would be, that'd be fantastic. That'd be amazing. And just so everyone's clear, when you say deflection, mm -hmm. what does that word mean? Just generally sure. speaking. Sure, so when, when a shaft deflects, let me grab something yeah. soft here. Um, so when, when, when something deflects, it, it obviously, you know, there's, there's the 205 gram mass on the end of a shaft. Yep. So it creates force on the shaft in, in a certain way. So that 205 gram mass will create some amount of droop, right. you know, that way on a shaft. So this is a form of deflection. Yeah, this exactly. Is. So the <clears> mass pulls the shaft down mm -hmm. and it will also create a, you know a little bit of lead deflection so that's um, towards the yep, target towards is lead the deflection. target mm -hmm. yep. and trail deflection is the opposite exactly so gotcha. one of the chains of thoughts would always be that the softer the shaft the more lead deflection would be encouraged yep uh, therefore the more dynamic loft would be delivered the the angle of attack would change right. because as that shaft is deflecting upwards you know the CG is moving moving, moving up. more up that way um, Real talking to the guys um, at, at Ping about their, their finds with, with Enzo is they actually found that even when that was true, that the shaft was in lead deflection more, the chances were at the time the handle would be in, and uh, the player would subconsciously move the handle further forward oh, with okay. a softer shaft. And the amount of forward sh handle lean would actually cancel out any lead deflection so softer shafts would actually produce slightly lower flighted shots than stiffer shafts. Which is exactly what Crossfield test exactly showed. So that showed. is totally possible. Not only is it Completely possible, it actually possible. makes perfect sense. Yep. Okay. So it's more to do, you know, we, we can't always just be aware of what's happening at the head. Right. We have to be aware of what's happening at the handle right. uh, in order to, to, you know, have a full picture of the dynamics. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. So, you know, we'll try and get some deliveries on that today. I mean, the things that we can measure on GC Quad, such yeah. as dynamic loft, strike point, angle attack. Yep. You know, we can we can measure all those things and start to, you know, build our own. You can make some assumptions, I yeah, guess. And this is kind of a nice preview video for maybe that Enzo test that we'll do later on yep. in the year. Definitely. And another, you know, industry professional that I really trust we're going to bring into this conversation is Michael Neff from yep. uh, Gears Golf. So Michael, uh, you know, Gears is another motion capture technology with, with the, the, that's what the we'll link We'll link it below so people yeah, can see what exactly. it is. Yeah, exactly. So that's, again, so the motion capture cameras all around the room and same idea with the, the sensors on the club. Hmm. You know, Michael has some phenomenal uh, data on, on you know, the, the dynamic movement of the golf club. Right. He has like, some, some great YouTube videos of Lexi Thompson and her brother Nick uh, Thompson and, and right. basically the way that they load you know, the shaft. So Nick Thompson, former PJ Tour player, yep, swings remember? it really quick, 120 yes. miles an hour. Lexi swings at about 105, 106. She places significantly more force on the shaft than he does. Really? Just with the way she loads it. That's so crazy. And, and they can actually measure that with gears. So, you know, maybe put a link to that video and, you know. Yeah, we, let's find that for yeah. everyone for sure. That's very cool. It's a really cool one. So, you know, this is a bit of a, you know, a Pandora's box for a lot of people. So they go, geez, what I have to factor in in terms of the movement of the shaft and, <clears throat> yeah. you know, all that sort of thing. But, um, Let's consider it kind of the first chapter of yeah. a new discussion about shafts. It's part of what we can help with. I think it's cool to just go through things like what you're doing, which are fact-based, mm -hmm. and you've actually confirmed, based on the facts, some of the observations that, that we've had yep. and that Mark's had and other testers have had where sure. maybe some shafts didn't perform that differently, yeah. uh, maybe some did perform differently, but maybe for not the same reasons mm -hmm. people think. 
So I think it'll be kind of a cool way for people to slowly maybe change their perception about what a shaft actually does. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's, you know, when we were doing aftermarket shaft versus stock shaft, mm -hmm. um, you know, things like that, you know, it's, it's, you know, where we start to see consistencies and inconsistencies. Yes. Um, and it's not all to do with, you know, the higher the price, the, you know, the better the shaft will perform for the player. Yes. It's just, it's just when you start dealing with the higher grade materials that generally will make a shaft more stable, mm. you know, with more tensile strength, you know, the, in certain areas where you can manipulate the bend profile, that costs more money. Yeah, of course. That's, that's more of what it is rather than value equals quality. Correct. It just, or, may, or fit, it just may fit a different person differently. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, Shall we? Hit some shots. Cool. Okay. So we've got your uh, your gamer, which you've you've been hitting for a few weeks now. In I'm liking fact, we're it. Gonna I'm make liking one it change to the setup of that. Oh yeah, right. Cool little open. This is a big test for Matt right here. He's been working hard on his swing. I have been working hard on my swing, yes. Making a few changes. I have been making some changes. I haven't played a ton of actual golf, to be fair. I uh -huh. only played about, uh, I played one 18 hole round and one nine hole round since mm -hmm. I've been working on this. So right. lots of range time, but probably not as much uh, under pressure time. So this will be a nice little. I if we should do a, we should do a giveaway for anyone who can detect the changes you've made to your swing. I, I don't think it'll be that hard for people to see, really? but I posted a swing on Instagram, just my own, and a couple guys kind of picked up on it. Really could see there's clearly. Some, oh yeah, there's some perceptive golfers out there, obviously. I'm but sure. I think it's fairly obvious. Okay. All right. All right. Cute. So, just for anyone who hasn't seen Matt, any of Matt's driver fits in the past, he uses a, a Ping G400 Max. Yep. Mitsubishi Kurakagi XT70 TX, big boy shaft. It's a very nice shaft. Mm -hmm. Feels nice and smooth though, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. Yep, yep, definitely. And that's another thing when we talk about the role of the shaft mm. and, and the reason we are able to get you into that when we're a 70 TX, which is stable and stiff, yes. feels good. You know, it has a higher torque rating. The torque than, rating than is. Tor and, and that's a big thing. We're, we, you and I haven't um, you know, discussed this with you yet, but we'll get into more torque testing because mm. that's one thing that, that people can really change their opinion of a shaft based on I, what the torque I totally agree like. with that because I hear people all the time saying this torque rating is closer to four, yeah. but that's a trend in design now. Is that yeah. fair to say? Like modern shafts that are really stable, the torque torque's rates up now. Are, are a bit higher. Yeah. So, you know, we we're talking with Eric um, at Ping. He was talking about torque ratings. He'd done some testing with the guys at UST, mm -hmm. and they tested torque ratings from two degrees all the way up to eight degrees. Really? Even with the same bend profile. Eight degrees? Eight degrees of torque. Yeah. So they, they actually have some science papers, which he's forwarded to me, which I'll, I'll you know, read. And so he does, some, him, yeah. he'll do, he does some work with Sasho McKenzie um, uh, up at his lab in Nova Scotia. And they, uh, they've, they've been able to sort of decipher some of the trends that they're picking apart from, you know, different uh, torque ratings that's on the amazing. shaft. So I think that's going to be, we should almost do a whole video about torque because mm -hmm. torque has got to be the, one of the more misunderstood things when sure. it comes to shaft specs. Because yeah. everyone thinks lowest torque means stiffest shaft mm -hmm. and higher torque means weak shaft. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't, doesn't represent the brain profile at all. Okay. Okay. Let's hit a few. Big, big pressure on the new swing here. <laughs> it was a good hit. So my ball will tend to draw now, which is I'm happy with. I'm, I'm not missing. Yeah, I mean that's not the, missing that, it left. That's the one thing with your your old swing. You were trying to eliminate that high left one, yeah. weren't you? So I, I the last round of golf I played, I, I actually didn't hit any shots left, which was wow. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I have to get used to is just trusting a little bit more, you know, left side alignment, right. and I have to trust not trying to smother it mm -hmm. to save the shot. So. Yeah. We'll probably see more draws than usual, but... Working on the push draw. Working on the push draw. Certainly encouraging that more of a one-way ball flight, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's taking some getting used to, but those feel very solid and uh, well struck, I think. Pretty centered. Well, I mean, 
two very consistent strikes right on top of each other there. Slightly toe side, which will be encouraging a little bit more draw. Right. That's good too. That was really good. A bit longer that one, Matt. Yeah. So that's that's the shot I've played in the first couple of rounds since working on this. I'm I'm aiming down the left side mm -hmm. of every fairway and drawing it back. The okay. strikes were good. I mean, strike point, you know, consistency, we really like that. Um, I would say your your club path has significantly changed from where I saw you before. Seems more neutral. -ish. Way more neutral. Yeah, it's yeah it's you're funny, not yeah. nearly as much uh, from from the inside, which is probably why you no longer feel like you're stuck and you kind of hit that high fan to the left. Yeah, I, I've really recently just lost that fear of mm -hmm. hitting it left. Good. It's funny that it that it's I haven't hit. Well, that's not true. I hit a couple balls on GC Quad, but I wasn't watching the club path. That little cluster right there. I mean, they're shaping a bit, um, but, you know, they're all finishing in the same area, which is, yeah. you know, when I'm doing a driver fit with people, one of the first things I say is let's eliminate one half of the golf course. Unless you're really skilled and you want to be able to work it and shape it and that sort of thing, which I don't really think is all that necessary with a driver. If, no, you, can, uh, if you can shape it one way and you're going to hit that little consistent flight. That's yeah. perfect. Well, then it just becomes an alignment thing, right? You just choose a different target line. Definitely. Which Play into the full fairway rather than aiming down the middle and hoping you, you don't miss it too badly into either half. Which, which we've talked about, and I think just from my own perception, confidence-wise, mm -hmm. aiming at, let's say you aim in the left edge of the rough, yep. you're okay with hitting it there. And if it draws back, great. If it overdraws a bit, you're on the right side of the fairway. I think there's a lot, there's a lot to that mentality yeah. that people could pick up on. That's a good hit. Nice, Matt. Really so that nice. one, I just I got a little more brave in terms of starting it down the left side. I like what you've done, though. It's certainly, uh, you're certainly shaping it just one way. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was really nice. Okay, let's, uh, let's, throw, uh, let's throw a different shaft sure, in there. Yeah. Let's completely change the profile and see what we get. Um, strike location-wise, we were consistently in... We certainly four in the same spot. One just one just made yep. a little bit of a move out towards the toe. And I and I don't know. I would blame anything other than myself for that. Just because I think my distance to the ball, I've steadily gone further away with my old swing, mm -hmm. adjusting for something. So I'm noticing that I'm actually now that I stand a, a hair closer, I tend to strike it a bit better. So that might be a factor as well. One of the things, Matt, when uh, when these when these machines, when you strike the ball in the toe side. Um, the, the toe rotates significant is the fastest moving part of the golf club. Okay. It rotates significantly faster than the middle of the golf club. Right. So that's where you can see the efficiency dive down a little bit because you're striking it in a faster moving part mm -hmm. but producing less energy because it's out in the toe side. Okay. So that's where efficiency can drop down a little bit. Right. That's why sometimes you can get some heel strikes where if, as long as you hit it close enough to the middle, you can actually get a really high sort of efficiency from that one because it's a slower moving part of the head as long as you still produce enough energy. It's very energy. interesting. It's, yeah. So you're saying it's reading the club head speed high because of the toe exactly. movement. It's, it's relative. That's cool. Yeah. That's very cool. cool. It's uh, something, and, and depending on where they, they read the, the head on, on certain drivers, mm -hmm. you know, I know Trackman has a bit of a hard time reading, you know, club head speed a little bit, or reading it consistently based yep. on the head shape. Gotcha. No, that's interesting knowledge for people. I think a lot, we got a lot of questions about the efficiency rating yeah. um, on GC Quad versus Trackman. So stuff like that is, it's good insight just to kind of keep an eye on what affects that number. Would you say people get a bit too hung up on Smash Factor and, um, Efficiency ratings, or is it actually yeah, a good yeah, indicator? Yeah. No, I, I would say they get too hung up. Too on hung it. up on it, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't lose too much sleep over that. Hmm. All right, Matt. So we've uh, switched shafts out. We've put you into something that's kind of a different bend profile from what you use. Um, we've got you in the Fubuki J, much more tip active. You know, J spec shaft is always more tip active. Okay. Um, slightly higher balance point in the shaft. So um, one of the things Mitsubishi done with this one, they infused tungsten powder in, into the, the pre-preg, the butt section. So there's so more weight up here, you're saying? Much more weight higher in that club head. So again, trying to influence certain things in the shaft, balance point, yep. bend profile, and see what you know consistencies or inconsistencies that they breed. Gotcha, so this is a 50 gram shaft, yep. regular flex, tip soft, 
and the high balance point. Yep. So straight away, given that couple of waggles and practice swings, you, what, you feel you feel it moving around a bit more. Sure, for sure. Um, is that I mean, is that expected? I think so. You should yeah. physically, because it's an interesting question, right? Mm. Like it, the shaft is not designed to bend mm. much unless you're swinging yeah, at a certain yeah. speed, but you can still physically. Well, feel it's it. funny, you know, we, we always giggle about, yeah. you know. You, you people go into a store and giving it a oh, waggle is, and going, oh, is, is it too soft? I could never hit that one. Which is nonsense, obviously. Nonsense. But you can you can feel the difference. But whether or not it's a negative is uh, pretty subjective, I would say. Right. Best of the day. <laughs> Interesting flight, that's for sure. A very high. Yeah, I think I got a nice high strike on it. <clears throat> really good, like I made a good swing, to be fair. Yep. Another one of those, Matt, where we, we just kind of talked a little bit about where it reads the, the club head speed significantly higher based on strike location. That is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I know with what I'm working on in my swing, I know my swing speed has come down a bit for the time being. Yeah, yeah, um, you're trying to control your movements a little <coughs> bit more. And, and the ball speed being a few miles an hour lower makes sense. Yeah. But if I didn't hear you say that, I would look at the 122 and go, what, what's I'm wrong? Swinging, I'm swinging pretty quick. I'm swinging yeah. fast, but my ball speed's low. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Very cool. Uh, no. I would blame myself. You're, you're good. I knew you'd take ownership of that one. No, I think it and, was And rightly me. so. I, I think it was I, me. The wrong shaft would not make that happen. No, that was me for sure. Okay. Totally so let's, let's eliminate that one. Yeah, that was me. That was a, just a low strike in the head. Just a loss of balance, bad swing. Hit probably a little bit lower on the face than uh, the last one. Actually, much lower. You can see how much more spin it has, Matt. Yep, it does. So it felt probably low and slightly toe section. Yes. Lots more spin, as you said. I'll tell you what, that felt good too. <laughs> Again, that's the shot I'm trying to play, so I, yep, I, don't, no. I don't consider that a hook. I just need to aim further left. Right. <clears throat> Better hit. I'm a little surprised it's drawing that much, to be honest. My start line looked better. Quite significantly higher ball flight, Matt. You're averaging right now nearly 30, 30 feet higher. Interesting. Very interesting. That was a good one too. Yeah. A little lower strike. Lower strike, more spin, more gearing. Yep. Of the golf ball. I don't think I would have swung any slower. really uh, very, very interesting to me that your strike point change, let's, let's kind of look at the comparison of the strike point. So your average was more toy and lower. So lower on the face with this one a bit? Yeah. Your average uh, dynamic loft, not all that different. You had one high one, I would say it was a little bit less, you know, if we, we eliminate a bit of an outlier there. The 19.5 on that one. Yes. Um, you know, 14.7 versus 16. In terms of the dynamic lie angle, it was definitely delivering the, the club more toe down. Right, so that's exactly yeah. what you expected. It's we doing this. We would expect this. more of that def doing this. downward deflection. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's a good question. If it's, if it's deflecting downwards, mm -hmm. it's flattening the lie. Yeah. Is that going to make the ball start more left for Correct. me? Or for Absolutely. a right-handed golfer, it's mm -hmm. going to start more right. Yep. So a softer shaft could actually make you hit the ball more of a push. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Change the dynamic lie angle. That's not something most people would think of, I don't think. No, no. And, and it's counterintuitive to yeah. some degree. Yeah. And, yeah. and I probably would be reluctant in a fit to 
go completely in an opposite direction in terms of the deflection just to change dynamic lie angle. Because it's a driver, it's not as much of a factor? No, it still, still, plays, a, still plays a role. It does, okay. Yep, definitely. And it's something that, that is, you know, we talk about, we complain almost at how, how upright the modern driver has become. Okay. Because, you know, you know, certain players, you know, when they deliver the handle very low, get that driver sitting so toe up. When we see at times, you know, the line go being eight to 10 degrees toe up. Toe up. Yeah, if you get that, di uh, that <coughs> vertical swing plane number lower, okay. which is indicative of, of a really good player swing. So, right. Um, in terms of the speed, um, you seemed to create more, more speed. Now we've got again another outlier in there, so let's, let's not jump to too big a conclusion. 119, 119, 120, 120. Yep. You were a little bit quicker with the ping. Uh, sorry, with the Fubuki. Was that because the strike was more in the toe like we talked about? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Because that, that's the club speed number. What yeah. about the ball speed number? Ball speed number was 168.2 versus right. 169. So likely not a big difference. No. So in terms of the net distance change, decent size difference. And, and would it be safe to say that was it was just striking? I was striking this shaft, or sorry, this head with this, this shaft, shaft lower. Yeah. Lower and then I was striking the other one higher, so I got less spin and more distance. Right. That's really all it is. Yep, that was it. Was, it was mostly strike point. Yep. Um, like we said, you know, the height was the big difference. So not a big difference in the two carry numbers, but a big di bigger difference, obviously. On the on the total number based on the angle of descent yep. into the fairway. Gotcha. So um, you know lower spin rate with with one, higher spin rate with the other, based on strike point being just higher. Yeah. Can we go to the compare page just to give sure. uh, the big graphic for everyone to see? Yeah, that that's that's kind of the clearest picture to me. It's the the if we go to the strike point or the club data page shows the strike. It's just a bit lower strike on yep. average. It yep. kicked up a little extra spin, pretty much. Would you say the bigger the bigger story is the lower strike in terms of how it actually yeah. affected the performance? No, no doubt. Right. Absolutely no question. That lower strike was was playing a big, big role. So to me, that illustration is about as good as you can do with a human being because I think so. you took two different shafts. I, I, you, we know the shaft didn't change the ball flight, but it did change the strike, mm -hmm. and the strike changed the launch conditions. And and you know what did you feel throughout the show? What throughout both kind of uh, swing both clubs? I mean, did you hate one and love I the other? Hate, I didn't hate this one. Mm -hmm. It obviously feels very soft. Yep. So I, I felt it bending more in the downswing. Sure. Or I guess deflecting, as you say. Yeah. Um, maybe it, it deflected a bit more behind me. But mm -hmm. in, a, in a funny way, um, the really good one I hit with this, I felt like it got nicely behind me and allowed me to kind of hit that push draw. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It deflects a bit more to let someone kind of get it a bit more it's inside. Change the start line a little bit. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, those are all those are all things that you go. You know, the, the golf swing happens, especially the downswing in, in, yeah, it's in so a flash. Quick. But during that, you know, in that swing, you're you're feeling all these sorts of things. Yep. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, if you feel something that kind of you feel a little uncomfortable with, you're going to make a reaction. Yeah. I know. think if I played with this on a regular basis, I would probably fear the extra draw. Yeah. There was there was one shot that I hit that I thought would be on target, mm -hmm. that did continue to draw. Right. That's probably the only one that actually surprised me. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it's pretty subjective. Whether that's the shaft bending extra yeah. doing that, I, I don't know, maybe. But I think we showed that, you know, launch conditions numbers, like you said, launch yeah. condition numbers, it's not really the shaft making a big change, but mm -hmm. we did show that the strike location could easily be influenced by those two things. If the strike location can be changed by the shaft's deflection, you can change the launch and spin numbers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it, when you add in, the thing is, I, I know people will still be skeptical because you're going to add in the variable of different people's golf swings. Mm -hmm. And so to hit 10 shots in a row that are yeah. the same, yeah. it's not possible for me, nor is it possible for anyone else. Mm -hmm. I would say that I hit those pretty consistently. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think, in my opinion, that would show a, a fair pattern. You know, it's not a robot swing, but it's still, you know, we, I think we established a pattern yeah. with those things. Exactly. Well, I think it's some, some food for thought in, in this whole conversation as to the role of the golf shaft yes. and, and how that plays out and what the effects may be. And ultimately, we're just trying to arm the golfer with tools to go, if you're seeing some inconsistencies in strike, maybe you want to look at the, the, the shaft and the role of the shaft for you. If you're hitting a ball that's way too high with way too much spin, 
don't necessarily jump to conclusions that your shaft is too soft. For sure. Maybe have a look at the, the characteristics of that head. Yes. Maybe there's a more suitable head. And you've uh, said outright many player. times, just changing the loft a degree yeah. would make more difference than any shaft would ever make. That's right. The strike being equal, obviously. Most of, more times than not, a, a, a tailor-made M3 10 and a half with weights forward will fly quite a bit lower than a nine degree G400 Max sitting square. Really? One, even though it's got one and a half degrees more loft, where the CG is and what, what we're basically, the characteristics of that head will make the ball fly it down. lower through a lower apex than a G400 Max. Yeah, so you're taking loft, CG location, yep. head design. Those things are huge factors. Big. And then you take the shaft and you're dialing yep. in different things. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Cool. Guys, I hope this helped. Um, you know, I think I think this one's got some uh, some you know legs. I think there's there's more of a more of a narrative to, to continue with this one. I think with Tess and Matt and I are going to do at Ping and with with other systems like Gears with Michael Neff and you know hopefully some robot testing, which we've kind of you know uh, hinted that we're going to be doing some of that stuff. We can take this conversation a little further and can it continue to educate ourselves, not just you guys continue to educate us in terms of the role of, of the head and the shaft and how they work together with different types of swings. So we hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you again soon.